Hello everyone and thank you for choosing NG Preparation to study for your IB exams and assignments. Today we're going to be looking at the idea of the price mechanism and allocative efficiency. Let's start off with a quote from the father of modern economics, Adam Smith. He says, it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, baker, or brewer that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own self-interest. What he means by this is that the baker, the brewer, or the butcher would not provide us with any goods if there wasn't something in it for them, if they didn't have profit as an incentive and price as a signaling function, which leads us on to look at the price mechanism and the invisible hand. But what is the price mechanism? The price mechanism is basically the idea that price serves a signaling and incentive function in the allocation of resources. In a free market, the price mechanism or the invisible hand that leads producers in their allocation of resources allows producers to answer the question of what to produce. In the end, the price mechanism results in firms producing only the goods that consumers are willing and able to buy, while consumers buy only those goods that producers are willing and able to supply. We would then see that with a change in taste and preferences within consumers, producers will change their allocation of resources to suit this change in preferences. And we can show this in a production possibilities curve by showing a movement within the PPC to show either a greater production of good X or good Y, for instance. Again, the invisible hand that changes this allocation of resources from one good to the other is made up by price's two main functions. Price signals to producers what consumers are willing to buy. Higher price will signal to producers that they should produce more of a good because it is being demanded more highly by consumers. And what we mean by the incentive function is that producers have the incentive to produce goods with higher prices because their profitability, setters purpose, will increase. Therefore, when consumers attribute higher benefit to a product and signal this through price, producers have the incentive to provide this good because they believe it will increase their profits. So let's say, for instance, the news comes out saying that strawberries are really good for your health. So demand for strawberries increases and consumers begin to attribute a higher price for strawberries. So they signal with higher prices the fact that they're getting better utility from strawberries because producers are profit maximized and they're incentivized by higher prices than the idea of greater profit they will then increase their supply from a to b and therefore we are led to a new market equilibrium and we answer the question of what to produce taking into consideration what consumers want another example of the invisible hand at work would be in the market for labor for instance let's say suddenly the supply of labor increases because there's an influx of new workers into the labor force. As a result of the increase in supply of labor, there is excess supply, and so wage begins to fall until the surpl surplus disappears. In other words, workers will understand that there may be more competition in the market, so they lower their wages. However, as you will learn in macroeconomics, there are exceptions to this rule because of wage price stickiness. But this shows how a falling wage can signal to firms that there was a surplus in the market and incentivizing them to hire more labor, causing a movement along the supply curve. We also say that the invisible hand and the price mechanism, if left undisturbed, leads to allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency is a state of Pareto optimality, meaning that you can't make somebody better off without making someone worse off. It is considered the optimal situation in a market. And it is given by the condition P equals MC. We also say that allocative efficiency maximizes consumer and producer surplus. Consumer surplus is shown by the area under the demand curve, but above the market equilibrium. And producer surplus is the area under the demand curve and underneath the market equilibrium line. When we say consumer surplus, we mean the difference between the prices that consumers were willing to pay and the prices that they actually paid. So for instance, if a consumer was willing to pay $10 for a t-shirt, but the t-shirt was sold at $5, then the consumer surplus is $5. The same idea goes for producer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between the price that producers are willing to sell a good at and the price at which they actually sold at. So if a producer sells a product for $15, but they were willing to sell the product for only $5, then again, the producer surplus is $10. So in allocative efficiency, both consumer surplus and producer surplus are maximized. This is known as community surplus, the sum of producer and consumer surplus. We can also think of allocative efficiency as producing exactly what consumers want. It is also represented by the conditional marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, meaning that the benefit that the consumer gets from consuming one more unit of the good is exactly equal to the cost to the producer of producing one more unit of the good. But in situations where the government intervenes, we often see that allocative efficiency is lost because we're no longer producing at the market equilibrium. So for instance, in the situation of a tax, this results in higher cost of production for the firm, so the supply curve shifts from S to S1, and this creates a welfare loss, a loss in both consumer surplus and producer surplus, meaning that we're no longer allocative efficient, 
nor are we producing at the optimal price and quantity. We also say that things like subsidies and taxes distort the price mechanism and prices signaling function because it makes price actually seem different than the marginal benefit that is attributed to these products by consumers.